Hi there all. Today's video is about testing various separators. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it all in one go or we'll have to leave it overnight and see the voltage drop. I was planning to charge them for a minute and watch the voltage drop of each different type of membrane. So that may work out okay or enough. So we'll have a, they're all around about the same size and on the same material. Uh, they all have uh, cellulose acetate except for the plain paper towel with nothing on it. That's a test example. That's the um, base test. Uh, we have a thick layer boron coated on one side only. We'll be testing a thin layer boron coated on one side only. And we have single layer cellulose acetate only on one side and a cellulose acetate double-sided cell membrane so that'll be the tests and uh, leaving off from the last test with the feather carbon I managed to sort of get some sort of calculation the um, in a zinc plate with a graphite pad with a boron separator piece of feather carbon and a piece of manganese dioxide carbon. It's important where you put the manganese dioxide needs to be directly on the collector or the milliwatt hours is um, down and same with the feather carbon. The feather, when the feather carbon is on top and collecting, uh, touching the collector it's way down. If the feather carbon's under that one and on the collector the uh, milliwattage is up by for a double coated feather carbon of 0 0.2 grams is one milliwatt hour extra compared to just running one without Just, I mean, running with a single layer of um, manganese dioxide. So it boosts it by one milliwatt hour, 0 0.2 grams of the feather carbon. Eh, not too bad. And this one was um, sort of where I was doing all the testing on. It's been idle for about four or five days. Only problem with it is you have to clean under the pad if you get any electrolyte on the copper pad because it corrodes it really badly it leaves a really bad oxidized surface on it so at it's dry it's just been open it's bone dry it's almost like a crystal cell now it's holding 1.4 volts over what was it three days ago i think i gave it a quick charge up but the milliamps is down there's not much milliamps going on in it there's probably only 20 10 could be 11 it's on the 200 milliamp range. It's holding that, or oh, it was. Yeah, it's holding 10 quite easy. I'll swap it over. It's on the 200 milliamp range. I think. Yeah, there, it was 20 milliamps. So not too bad for a dry cell. And today's test cell is going to be the membranes on the zinc plate. I'm going to use it that way. I'm going to have the electrode out here. It's going to be manganese dioxide and a layer of feather carbon. I mean, yeah, feather carbon. And then the various membranes directly on the membranes will go on the zinc side. And we'll charge this up for a little bit. I got the charger now set at, I'll put that over there, at that, but when I connect it, it drops down a fair bit and increases the amps going to the cell. I'll just swap that over to the 10 milliamp range and do a minute's charge. That didn't that time when it's dry, I guess. And we're only doing 200 milliamps this time. 
and it's up near seven volts. Normally when the cell's wet, this only goes to about 3.5 and works its way up a little bit and that's up near 900. So don't forget, it's really dry that cell. It may not have much. And all right, for that little charge at that voltage, short circuit, it's only 60 milliamps, 50, dropping quickly. So not that fancy, but I was surprised it holds its voltage while it's dry as well. It was only, I think it's only about a 25 milliwatt hour, yeah, milliwatt hour cell anyway. All right, so I'll um, get this test underway. We'll just start with the plain paper towel, the same electrolyte zinc sulfate, and uh, I'll get back. Okay, the first cell, plain paper towel, further carbon, manganese dioxide carbon, and then the collector plate. 1.72 volts. And for a short circuit, it's on the 10 milliamp range, 10 amp range, I mean. 300, oh, that's quite good. Maybe just stick with the plain paper towel, perhaps. Because uh, I think that's a record for uncharged cell. Hmm, well, I never really tested a plain one compared to the acetate one. So now I am finally got to it. So that's still 200 milliamp without a charge. Alright, so I'll, um, I'm quite impressed with that one actually. I'll uh, put one minute's charge at that current setting, which we're on 7 volts or something. And I'll uh, get back. There's that thing I was talking about with the voltage drop. It's only 3.4 going in, but 900 milliamps. And the gauge there drops down to 5. Probably um, stressing out my power supply, maybe, slightly. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, we're at one minute to charge. Just over. Disconnecting the charge, and I guess we time the voltage drop. Or should we do a power run? I don't know, we'll do a voltage drop without anything. Alright, uh, I'll be back. Okay, it's 20 minutes later, sitting around, just being idle. It dropped 0.3 of a volt in 20 minutes. It's now 23 minutes on the time scale. That's with our one minute charge and a bit of a delay. And we'll do a discharge just to see what the cell has actually got in it. We're doing a 30 milliamp test. Now. All right, I'll get back when that finishes. Okay, I'm back. The plain paper towel membrane, 10 milliwatt hours and 16 minute run on a one minute charge. So that looks all right for just plain paper. And it's bounced back to 1.3 volts and I think it's been, I've been doing stuff. So about 20 minutes ago. So then we'll just check a short circuit. And it's still 200-ish. And I'll clamp it 170, dropping fast. So paper towel, not too bad. All right, I'll um, set up the next cell, which will be, we'll, use, we'll try the thick layer, single-sided boron coated in the um, acetate membrane as well for the next cell. So I'll set that up and I'll get back. Okay, we have the cell constructed with the thick layer of boron with the layer of boron facing up towards the carbons. And for us, our voltage is 1.28, so the plain paper towel was 1.7, was it? I'll check the video, but it was higher, I think, than that. And for a short circuit, without a charge, 160, so it is, it's down. The other one was a 300 milliamp short circuit with plain paper towel, so there seems to be a restriction. But we'll see how it goes when we charge it for a minute. I will be back after the minute. Started the charge, it's responding the same way, 900 milliamps and a bit more. 
and low on the voltage compared to the actual charge. And that's the curve. I'll be back in 40 seconds. Okay, we're at a minute. The boron seems to be a higher voltage going through the cell. Alright, disconnect on that and we'll monitor it for 20 minutes and take note of the voltage drop. The last one was a 0.3 volt drop in 20 minutes. This one looks a bit better already. We're already still holding 2.2. Alright, oh, one other thing, the boron with the thick layer facing the carbon may respond better with the thick layer facing the zinc plate, perhaps, so I'll have to do two tests on this cell. So I'll get back in a minute with the uh, results of the being idle. Okay, I'm back after 23 minutes idle, and it's only dropped, uh, it just went from 2 volts, so it's around about 0.3 again, sort of. I think it's holding a bit better than just a plain paper towel but in saying that the borax sort of does block the um, electrical flow through the cell so we'll do a discharge stop the monitoring 30 milliamps again with the thick single layer borax separator boron sorry borax on the brain Okay, I'll get back. The last run was 10 milliwatt hours in 15 or 16 minutes. Okay, the thick boron separator cell has finished its discharge. It's somewhat down, 2 milliwatt hours down from the plain paper towel version of the cell. It's 8 milliwatt hours, this one in 14 minute run time. It's 2 minutes off of the other one too. So interesting, so it's sort of somewhat blocking. So I'll um, flip that membrane over to see if the thick part of the boron likes to be on the um, zinc plate and I'll give it a charge and be back. Okay, we're at our minutes charge. Disconnecting the charger. Alright, we're at 2.3, so I'll be back in 20 minutes. That'll be like about 22 minutes time on the clock down here. <coughs> Seems to be looking like it uh, doesn't matter being up or down. This is the thick single layer boron separator facing towards the zinc plate. Okay, the th thick single layer boron cell facing towards the zinc plate is somewhat less of a leak. It's 20 minutes idle and 2.02 still. Normally it'd be down near 1.9. So it's looking good. So we'll do a discharge test for this cell. I'll stop monitoring and start. All right, I'll be back when this is done. Okay, the cell ran for nine milliwatt hours. So slightly up compared to the other one in 15 minutes, but one minute shy of the paper towel separator with nothing applied to it. So somewhat restrictive, but holding voltage, so somewhat got to weigh that up. And the next cell on the list is the single layer boron separator, but thinly applied. So I'll uh, set that cell up, give it a minute, oh, no, we'll check the initial voltage and short circuit, and then I'll give it a charge. Okay, this is the thin layer boron uh, coated separator only on one side. It's the same voltage, 1.2 as the thick version. And we'll check a short circuit. 250 dropping fast. It's on the 10 amp range. Somewhat holding at 100 milliamps. So not too bad. They're pretty similar, so it doesn't look like there's much difference. Uh, I'll set up a one minute charge and I'll get back. Okay, we're at one minute and it's gone to one amp over there. Right, I'll disconnect that and we'll just keep the monitoring and I'll be back in 20 minutes.
Okay, the thin layer boron cell has been sitting for an extra 21 minutes idle now and uh, it's 2 volts so it's not too bad. I'll stop monitoring and we can do a run, 30 milliamp run. Slightly higher by a fraction. So it looks like the thin one doesn't matter. The thin side, uh, the boron's facing upwards at the moment. All right, I'll get back when this one's finished. Okay, the thin layer boron separator cell seems to be around, oh, it's got 16 minutes, but milliwatt hours, only nine milliwatt hours. So it's one milliwatt hour off, but longer duration for some reason. All right, so I'll conduct the other two tests with the plain membranes tomorrow. All right. Back the next day, that's the uh, fine boron separator cell from the last little episode of the video. It's 22 hours later. It's uh, at 1.3 1, 1 volts after our run last night. And I don't know if it's got any milliamps, we'll check. And it's uh, had 100 milliamps, it's on the 10 amp range, 70 now. So that's not too bad. It's um, a bit dry. Yeah, it's actually gone a bit hard. Somewhat stuck a bit. See, it's fairly dry. And of note, where the boron, boron sticks to the zinc plate, it's somewhat clean, unless it's peeled off there. That's it there. Oh yeah, maybe it's stuck. Instead of sticking to the plate, it's stuck to where the heavy layer of boron is. So the other, what we have left is a single-sided acetate membrane and a double-sided acetate membrane. So I'll set that cell up. I'll clean this plate as I, I'll clean the surface off as I did with all the tests. And uh, I'll be back. Okay, single layer cellulose acetate membrane, our standard sort of cell uh, membrane. 1.3 volts still. And for a short circuit, I just formed the cell. 250 it went and dropping fast. I'm slightly holding at 120 milliamps. So that's looking okay. So single layer, not too bad. I'll um, charge it up for a minute and I'll get back. Okay, we're at one minute's charge. I'll keep the monitoring of the uh, voltage and I'll be back in 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes idle. It's uh, 1.9 volts, so it's about it's a 0.3 volt drop over 20 minutes. Somewhat less than the boron separator. That's only 0.2 over the same period. So I'll stop monitoring and 30 milliamp load test on the cell. I think we're averaging about 10 milliwatts or something like that. Alright, uh, I'll be back. Okay, this is the single layer cellulose acetate membrane we're testing. Uh, 14 minutes and 8 milliwatt hours, so it's a little bit down compared to the boron separators. Interesting. So I've got the double membrane uh, coated both sides cell to do next, and uh, I'll get back when I set that up. Okay, this is the separator coated both sides with cellulose acetate and it's at 1.6 volts, I mean 1.26 volts without a charge, I just assembled the cell and for a short circuit 150 milliamps and dropping so slightly down, it was also slightly down in the voltage 
I think the single coated one was 1.3, so not much down, but slightly down. All right, I'll give it a minute's charge and I'll be back. Okay, we're at our minute. We're slightly up on the voltage where we were, and we sort of have an unstable curve with the double coating. Strange. All right, I'll, um... Oh yeah, that's right. I'll leave it idle and we'll see what we get. I'll be back in 20. Okay, back after 20 minutes idle with the double coated separator. 1.99 volts. We're slightly up compared to the single coat, so maybe. And uh, I'll stop monitoring and we're ready for a discharge with this membrane. <laughs> Okay, I'll be back. Okay, this is the double coated cellulose acetate membrane. 15 minute run time, 8 milliwatt hours. About the same as the single coat, so I noticed the single coat was 14 milliwatt, I mean 14 minutes on the timer there though. So we're one minute up, but same, no, we're less on the milliamps, milliwatt hours. It was nine, I think. Hmm. Uh, we have one more cell, I nearly forgot, a double coated boron separator. So I'll uh, set that cell up and uh, I'll get back. Okay, this is the double sided boron separator, thinly coated, 1.28 volts. I just assembled the cell and for a short circuit it's on the 10 amp range, 150 milliamps dropping, so not that great. The um. Cellulose acetate plane cells generated more of a short circuit. So I'll uh, give it a minute's charge and uh, I'll get back. Okay, we're at one minute. The charge curve's a bit more stable than the last test. So I'll disconnect the charger and I'll leave it monitoring for 20 minutes. I'll be back. Uh, 20 minutes on the double coated boron cell idle 1.994 only just clicked over to 1.9 so it seems to be holding its voltage well double sided boron separator so I'll stop the monitoring and we'll do a 30 milliamp discharge test Alright, I'll be back. Okay, the thinly coated double layer boron separator cells finished. It's uh, 8 milliwatt hours, 14 minute run time. So they sort of all similar I think. Mainly the voltage drop at the start we were watching and it's 1.2 on a rebound. It's been sitting there probably for about 10 minutes building up. We'll do a short circuit, see what it's got after the run and short circuiting 180 still drawable and it should be able to run that load with a little motor maybe just oh yeah 30 milliamps in the motor and 0 0.7 volts yeah so there you go hope you find that fascinating and um thanks for watching <laughs>